Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Adams, and it's really my honor to talk a little bit about this editor's pick for the journal. This article is entitled Optimizing Breast Pocket Irrigation, the BIALCL Era. My collaborators and co-authors um, really uh, were great for this study. First and foremost, Dr. Eric Culbertson, who was my fellow for a year, um, just did a spectacular job generating data. He did a lot of work, actually. It's funny to have a plastic surgeon in, in the, the basic science lab, but Eric spent a lot of time there. I really appreciate that, and he, he really did the lion's share of the work in the study. But then also a couple other collaborators, Dr. David Greenberg, who we've collaborated at UT Southwestern, who's an incredible infectious disease doctor and also a biofilm expert, and we look forward to future collaboration with, with David and his lab. And then finally, uh, Anant Diva, who I met 20 years ago. We've uh, stayed in touch. We've collaborated on a lot of different bacteria slash biofilm related research. So it was a great to do the study of these guys. But the, this study is really an extension of work that we did 25 years ago. And, and the question is, when we originally looked at optimizing antimicrobial breast pocket irrigation, and we made some recommendations based on our scientific data because at the time in the 90s people were using all sorts of different kind of irrigations for the breast pocket but nobody had any idea what worked and the, the interesting thing was in our original studies um, originally published in 2000 in 2001 we found that most of the things people use actually didn't work against any bacteria um, staph epi alone but what about all the other bacteria that we really want to cover so those recommendations were out there and people knew about it, but what we found was that people really didn't follow the recipes. Oftentimes people thought they were doing the right things, but they weren't using the irrigations that worked. Um, so this study is kind of going back to the original premise, but in the BIALCL era, people have um, heard about that entity, obviously. They know that now the science is showing it to be related and, and potentiated by the presence of bacteria. And obviously the recommendations are to be, uh, to minimize that bacterial load around the implant. So people have gone back, uh, they know the gram negative mic microbiome is more significant uh, for BIALCL. And so we wanted to look at those irrigations that we had looked at 20, 25 years ago, but specifically for things that we're more concerned about with BIALCL, so the gram negative microbiome. And then we also wanted to look at some other types of um, irrigations that have been suggested but don't have a lot of data. So that's what this study is about. At the end of the day, uh, again, the betadine containing irrigations um, are the superior ones to use. That is really supported by the, the wealth of scientific data. There's only over 31 studies that support the use of, of antimicrobial breast pocket irrigation and the beta non containing irrigations have been superior um, in the studies that have tested them. And that's really what our study uh, bores out. Um, but what I would recommend for people is that the discussion of this paper is particularly notable because what we tried to do is take many of the questions that, that certainly we've gotten over the past 20 years and then questions that we've gotten recently with regard to BIALCL and antimicrobial breast pocket irrigation, and we've discussed and answered those. I hope that you really enjoy reading this paper. Uh, we had a great time uh, doing it, and this is really the first part of a second study, which will hopefully be out in ASGA in the near future.